Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Oklahoma was one of the most disappointing teams in the country last year. The Sooners had sky-high expectations in year one under Brent Venables, but finished with a losing record, going 6-7 six and seven with five one-possession losses, including a heartbreaking three-point loss to Florida State in the Cheez-It Bowl. But 2023 is looking to be a little bit better. Dylan Gabriel is back at quarterback. Brent Venables is now in year two as a full-time head coach. And the schedule, especially the early part, relatively favorable for the Sooners, where they might be able to contend for a Big 12 title in 2023. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. Because, guys, here at the Gridiron Expert, football never dies. The college football season never ends here at the Gridiron Expert, and we want you to become a part of that. We want you to become a part of our GE Nation. So take a look, hit that like button, hit that comment button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content, including predictions for every single college football team coming up here in just a few months. Don't want to miss that, including a prediction for every single game right here on Oklahoma's schedule. We're not predicting games today, but we are going to look at Oklahoma's schedule. So let's pull it up right now and take a look at what the Sooners are up against in year two under Brent Venables. Well, I look at this schedule and I say, hey, it's pretty good. I mean, this is pretty good. It's the point where I think Oklahoma could contend. If things kind of work together, they can fix, fix up their defense a little bit. Dylan Gabriel can stay healthy. This is a team that can contend for a Big 12 title. I would expect many would think that Oklahoma would start 2-0. Uh, open the season against Arkansas State, then SMU, both at home. Maybe 3-0 with a road game at Tulsa. Not necessarily a world beater uh, right now. So possibly 3-0. Then they get into conference play. And again, we're not predicting games here, but the first three games, are not should, in theory, should not be that challenging for Oklahoma. Then you get into conference play. And, and if you look, Oklahoma is going to play three of the four newcomers uh, in the Big 12. You know, we see BYU, uh, Houston, Cincinnati, UCF, all joining the Big 12 this year. They play Cincinnati, they play UCF, they play BYU. They avoid Houston out of the newcomers. So their first Big 12 game will be on the road at Cincinnati. How exciting is that? That's pretty cool to play a newcomer on the road. So it's going to be cool to see some of these new matchups against some of the newcomers to the conference. Uh, and keep in mind, guys, this will be Oklahoma's last season in the Big 12. So not only is it an opportunity to win the Big 12, to make a statement, they got to go out strong. They've dominated this league for so long and played so well. This is the last year in the Big 12 for Oklahoma before them, them and Texas jump ship to go to the SEC. So they open up against Cincinnati, a team that has a new coach in Scott Satterfield. Obviously, uh, kind of struggled towards the end of last year. Losing Luke Fickle is a huge blow. You don't really know what to expect out of Cincinnati because this is not going to be the same team we've seen these last few years under Luke Fickle. So I think they're going to see an adjustment. Certainly a tougher schedule for Cincinnati as well, not beating up on teams in the American Conference. So uh, I think many would probably lean Oklahoma's way in this one. Again, we're not predicting, but it's going to be interesting to see how the Sooners fare against this team, but also how Cincinnati fares against an elite Big 12 opponent. Iowa State, seen a lot of classics between Oklahoma and Iowa State in recent years. Last year wasn't one of them. The Sooners won 27-13 to against an Iowa State team that just struggled offensively. Pretty good defense, just couldn't get anything going offensively. I expect a different turnaround this year under Matt Campbell, but hosting the game in Norman is going to be a huge boost for Oklahoma here. Texas in Dallas, that's a huge game. That actually isn't part of the key stretch. We're going to get to that in a second. But Texas is one of, if not the biggest game on Oklahoma's schedule because of how they lost last year. Sooners lost 49 to nothing last year to Texas. It was an embarrassment against the Longhorns. They want revenge. I expect the game to be a lot closer this year. Texas certainly looking good on the rise. You got Arch Manning coming in, Quinn Ewers both battling it out to see who can get that starting job. Uh, the, the, you know, Texas showed improvement in year two under Steve Sarkeesian, but they really need to jump in year three under Steve Sarkeesian, especially as they get ready to move to the SEC. So this is going to be a great game, guys. The last game uh, between Oklahoma and Texas. As Big 12 members, can the Sooners bounce back and avenge their 49 to nothing loss? You're going to have to see a 49-point turnaround. I do expect it to be a lot closer. And I can tell you I'm very excited to break that game down here in a few months and certainly uh, the week of October 7th. They get their bye week right at the halfway points. They play six games, bye week, more six games. Open up the, after the bye week against UCF. They get to host UCF. So uh, out of those newcomers that we mentioned, Oklahoma was actually playing two of the three games against the newcomers on the road at Cincinnati and at BYU, and they get to host the night. That's going to be a fun game as well. But Oklahoma coming out rested 
It's going to be key. You know, I, I love Gus Malzahn. I think he's going to fit very well in the Big 12, back into a Power 5 conference. I think his style of offense is going to work extremely well in this conference. So that's one thing to kind of keep your eye on. If Oklahoma's defense isn't really clicking the way it should, UCF could come in here and put up some points on the Sooners. And it could be a closer game than many think. The key stretch for, for the Sooners, guys, it, it comes right here in those final five games. To me, it's a very, very difficult five-game stretch. So you look at these first seven games, in Oklahoma, I legitimately could see being undefeated or maybe just a one-loss team heading into the road game at Kansas. And if that's the case, if the Sooners are 6-1 and one or 7-0, and oh, you're not only talking about a Big 12 title, you're talking about maybe college football playoff. So a lot could be riding on this five-game stretch for Oklahoma uh, to close out the year. And if you look at it, three of those final five are on the road. We'll start with Kansas. A uh, Kansas team that offensively has taken off. Lance Leipold doing phenomenal things in Lawrence, getting the Jayhawks to a bowl game last year, nearly winning that bowl game over Arkansas. The Sooners beat Kansas 52-42 to last year. That was one of those games where Kansas was hot. They were ranked, They were playing good ball. Oklahoma was struggling, and yet Oklahoma was favored. Some people were like, how is that possible? Well, if you looked at Kansas' defense, which was atrocious, you knew why. And it was, a, it was a shootout. Kansas' defense couldn't stop them. So a battle between two teams that really don't have that great of a defense, two teams that should have a great offense. If you love points, this is going to be the game for you. But I wouldn't be shocked at all to see if Kansas beat Oklahoma because the Jayhawks are no longer the laughing stock of the conference. Far from it. Lance Leipold doing some great things with his Jayhawks. So that's going to be a tough game. Years past, you'd look at Kansas and go, oh, that's a win, move on. Not the case anymore. Then, Bedlam. At Oklahoma State, a little bit earlier, playing at the first game of November, so maybe a little later uh, towards the end of the year. They play Oklahoma State, a team they beat 28-13 to last year. An Oklahoma State team that also is going through some changes. They're not going to have Spencer Sanders. They have some changes on the defensive side of the ball. So two teams in Oklahoma that, uh, you know, really were kind of disappointing last year and still have a lot of questions to be answered in 2023. So it's going to make for an interesting bedlam in Stillwater. Those in-state games are always a lot of fun. One of the best rivalries in all of college football 15-point win for the Sooners last year. I don't know if they could replicate that. But again, a hostile environment uh, against a team that I would put on paper relatively similar to Oklahoma. They come back home. They take on West Virginia, a team they lost to 23-20 last year. I predicted that. I just want to throw that out there. Go back and watch our Oklahoma preview video. I said Oklahoma will lose in Morgantown, and everybody thought I was an idiot. Everybody said I was crazy. I didn't know what I was talking about, and I was right. West Virginia won 23-20. to Look at the numbers. That's how it works. This year, I don't know if I'd go that far. I think Oklahoma probably could get the win over West Virginia, a team that is just continuing to struggle and disappoint. But they do get to host them. First home game for them in three weeks. UCF, back-to-back -back road games, and they finally get to host West Virginia. Then they go on the road to BYU. Don't really know what to expect of the Cougars. By this point in the year, you'll kind of know how BYU has fared in a Power 5 conference, how they have fared against a very, very tough schedule, a schedule that we've actually already broken down here on the channel. So a BYU game in Provo going to make for an intriguing matchup, that's for sure. And then they close out the year against TCU, a team they lost to 55-24 to last year. Obviously, that was a game where Dylan Gabriel got hurt, but even if he hadn't have gotten hurt, Oklahoma was getting torched. TCU was running all over Oklahoma in that game. I think that was the moment where people realized TCU was for real. And TCU obviously went all the way to the college football playoff and was the national runner-up last year. Horned Frogs are destined to take a step back. They lose too much offensively, too much talent from last year's squad of destiny. But they're certainly no team to overlook. Oklahoma certainly will be looking to avenge that 31-point loss to TCU. They'll look to avenge a 49-point loss to Texas. Having TCU at home in the season finale on senior night with potential Big 12 title hopes on the line, with maybe college football playoff hopes on the line, uh, I would expect a much different outcome and much different effort out of Oklahoma against TCU. And a game that could be the first of two meetings, or a game that could have at least, again, Big 12 title or playoff implications, not just for Oklahoma, but maybe for TCU as well. Because they're going to take a step back, but they're not going to completely fall off. So, again, guys, you look at Oklahoma's schedule. I expect this team to turn around. They competed last year. I mean, five one-possession losses in a six-win season. Easily could have been a double-digit win season for Oklahoma. They, just, they faced injuries. They faced a bad defense. Uh, they, they had a first-year head coach that maybe was trying to find his footing, finally find his bearings, uh, running a full-time program. I expect different results in year two under Brent Venables. And again, I see the Sooners having a very, very strong start. So strong to the point where I think it could be 6-1 and one or 7-0. and oh. I think Sooner fans would be disappointed if it was anything less than 6-1. and one. It's those final five games that will determine Oklahoma's season. Whether or not they can win the Big 12 in their final year within the conference, whether or not they're legitimate college football playoff contenders, or whether or not they're going to fall a little short and maybe 
kind of have some questions and maybe a few concerns as the Sooners prepare to head into the SEC for the 2024 season. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, check out everything down in the description below. Because again, guys, here at the Gridiron Expert, football never dies. The football season never ends here at our channel, and we want you to become a part of it. We want you to be a part of our GE Nation so you can talk ball with us 24-7, 365. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah!